discretion is advised. Hey everyone, this video is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering you a free audiobook with a 30-day free trial membership. All you need to do is go to audibletrial.com forward slash bgunlocked. The link is in the description below, and now enjoy the video. Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Games Unlocked, and Brian and I are continuing our top 100 games of all time. This segment, uh, as you can read in the title, is 90 through 81. You know what my favorite part about um, the doing the top 100? What's up? Is the games just get better and better? Yeah. Like, I almost, it's weird. Well, on my list, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost weird. I, uh, like, it's like whenever you're doing, it's like, wow, uh, like 98, you almost feel, like a lot of people are like, oh, that's a shit game. It's like, no, like I still, every game for the record that was even considered, I still own. Mm -hmm. So... For me, like like I said at the in the last segment, I think I cycle games out a lot. If I don't play it for a long time and I'm like, I don't think I will, I'll sell it. If someone else wants it, then great. Then they can play it all the time. Um, but through the nature of running a channel, I probably would have have more game like as much as mm -hmm. as much games as you if I just didn't have to keep buying for mm -hmm. the for the channel. Oh yeah, for sure. Because I don't have to, but I do. Anyway. Uh, let's have you start this one. All right. Start My one. number... No. Oh, <laughs> by the way, I have... <laughs> you were probably thinking the same thing. I, think, I have two new games on the... Uh, I, in this, this segment? Yeah. I have one. I have one new one in this segment, so... Uh, but okay. this one's not... Uh, it, it, okay, just go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. My number 90 is a game that I wish I still owned. Um... Mm. It's That's funny. I, I was just like, I still own all well, my. I I sold this one because it's it's not gonna be ever made again, and so I oh you just wanted money the money for it because I hadn't played it, but then I wish I had it. So last year it was one hundred and three, the year oh, before okay. that it was eighty five. Okay. It went up because I played somebody else's copy, and mm. that is Space Hulk Death Angel, mm, mm. the card game. Um, really? Okay. I really like it because it's a great solo game. Yep. It's a great co op game. It's really tough. Um, I actually own a copy. Really? Yeah. yeah Not, none of the expansions. Yeah, so. it's. I love the game. It's so Space Hulk was a game I've never played. The big sprawling, um, you know, Space Marines against mm -hmm. the Tyranid and all that stuff. And I never did get it because it was always a hundred dollar game. And, yeah. You know, crap like that. Then they came out with this card game version. Simulates the stress of it and everything, um, and it's just simple. You line up all your your space marines. Mm -hmm. each, each person gets two when you do it. They get put out there. You yep. support other people. You help other people. Um, yeah. There's was, shit just coming was constantly. Was the theme like you were in like a corridor, so that's why you're single file? Was that a thing? Your work, yeah. It like, I can't like remember a, how weird it, it was. It looks like a corridor. Okay. Because you, you have to like maneuver. On a ship. Yeah, you have to like maneuver past people, right? Right. Do, yeah. Right. And you, fl you know, if you get flanked, because it's a left and right, because things like mm. if you have monsters over on this side. Uh, oh, you're facing. You're matters. facing. They're facing. Yeah. Right. You, you, yeah. You can flip your facing because if you get flanked, then they get more attack on you. That's right. So then you have to. It's there's a lot of strategy in this mm -hmm. game for it being just a simple deck yep. of cards kind of game, and you're. There's different scenarios that you're trying to do. There's stages to the scenario that you're trying to go to blow up this yep. or whatever it is. Um, the expansions added a lot. I wish I would. I mean, I sold my box with the two expansions in it for like 150 bucks. Mm -hmm. Just that little box. Yep, it's a you tiny know? box, like the size of one of these it's index those cards. FFG little box, yeah. skinny box. That like they, they essentially quit doing. Stuff. Right. Like, I mean, um, it's. The game is fun. I need to play it again. Mm -hmm. I still have it because I know it it ha it's, it can sell for a pretty penny, but I yeah. remember liking it. I played it just the one time as a co-op, but I think I would like it more as a solo. Yeah. Solo game. Yeah. Um it is it is very hard. Funny enough, fun fact, this is one of the few Ameritrash games that Rado actually likes. Yeah. And I yep. don't know what it is, but it it works for him. Yeah, it got introduced to me. That this was actually the very first game that my wife bought me really was, was death angel huh back in the day back whenever it was in print i'm assuming yeah yeah, yeah. um this would have been back like 10 years ago when she got it for mm -hmm. me or whatever but but uh but yeah you know it's it's hanging around there you know yeah it'd it be may interesting or may to not see be on there it might be just one of those games yeah it's just kind of that's where it put it at okay so it's death angel 
That's that's a that's a good one. Yeah. Um, my number ninety is a pirate themed game. One of the few pirate games that I've actually played and liked, um, and that is Merchants and Marauders. Um, this game is to me the pinnacle of pirate like board game that it makes it very difficult for me to want to try other ones. You know, there was one at Gen Con this year that looked really cool, but I'm like, why would I play that whenever I have this other one? And I understand that they're all different. And there's one I want to try that Z keeps talking about, Libertalia. I've heard that. That's not a, that's a total different kind of game. Gotcha. Though. You're not sailing ships or doing anything. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, what was, there's, there's other ones. That, but there, I mean, there are pirate themed games that I have. Uh, Rattle Battle Grab the Loot is a pirate themed game, I guess. But this one is so pinnacle because you do so much pirate stuff or merchant stuff. Uh, real quick, in 2018, it was number 39, so it fell 51 spaces. And in 2017, it was actually 53. Okay, so it kind of so bounced. So it, it bounced forward, then bounced back, what kind of way back. And the reason why it's even back at all is because just lack of play it's one of those things that the game is uh relatively long and with the expansion which is a phenomenal expansion makes this game so much more thematic so much more to do uh like a lot of variants you can throw in to make this game even more piratey that it, it's just a lot of rules um i actually start making a list of games that i haven't played in a while to make a point to play them because right. it's like look if they're not getting played for a while why is that and then play it again then kind of make a decision if I should keep it or not uh, Cry Havoc is actually one I haven't played in like a year and a half and I'm mm -hmm. like I remember being really good but anyway so Merchants and Marauders if you don't know it is you it's, it's your pirate sandbox game you can go around and you can try and just uh, get goods from one location and sell them to another location and you make money and then you have your own little chest area like uh, your home that you, you have a secret uh, chest that you put money in secretly not necessarily secretly but no one knows how much is in there right uh tons of ways to get points first one to get to 10 wins there's uh multiple ways to do that five of which you can get is if you get 50 in your chest but that's the max you can get in your treasure chest the rest you have to get elsewhere and then uh you get a point for buying a galleon, so the one of a big ship. You get a, a point for completing rumors and doing, like, so you can get rumor cards and do that. You get a point for selling a certain amount. Um, combat is also, uh, combat's actually really fun. It's dice, but it's pretty neat because you, when you attack each other, you actually can decide if you want to shoot them or try and board them. And when you right. board them, then it's based off of your captain. It's really neat. It's such a good pirate game. Um that I, I, it's my number 90. Perfect. Um, my number 89. Uh, it was actually 42 last year. Mm. And 36 before that. Wow. So it fell 47 oh. from last year. And it's not because the game is necessarily bad, it's just because it's I... It's not necessarily good well, either. Well, no, because here's the deal. <laughs> You'll probably get it after, because... There, it is similar to another game that we both like. Okay. Um, different theme though, and the theme makes it to where, um, it doesn't get played as much. Like I That's only can play it solo. Oh, okay. Because nobody else likes this theme. Okay. And it's Fifty First State Master. Oh, oh, okay. It's pretty much it's okay. pretty much Imperial Settlers. Post apocalyptic, but, yeah. But the post apocalyptic stuff. Um, so I really like that stuff, but you know if you if you have Imperial Settlers and that. I mean, more people are going to go to Imperial mm -hmm. Settlers. It's cuter. It's yeah. more vivid. It's more... Yeah. It's not even the know. fact that Imperial... Because Imperial Settlers has a very blah theme. Mm -hmm. And it's your it's regular... Just it's your, your life. And <laughs> it's just a regular... But post-apocalyptic is just... It's just awful. Yeah. I, hate, but I, really, I hate that theme. I really like... Matt. I yeah. mean, we need to try this sometime just to... Is it different? Is it really like... It is different. It okay. has different stuff. All it's right. just the core of it is the okay. same. You still have your... Your middle thing and your your building stuff on both sides. It uses the same same okay. deal. It's just it's it's just a little different, yeah. you know. And you have different resources, and yeah, stuff like that. Um, I do have the expansions and stuff that come. They haven't had any big expansions. It's just been didn't like, they just release a new one? Old decks, yeah. There's been scavengers, okay, and whatever. But they're just like little deck, the gotcha. little deck ones. Um, so I don't know what to say, but I mean, it's I I like it probably just as much as Imperial Settlers as far as that, but it's just the playing. I'm just mm -hmm. not getting it played. Hmm. I can't just, you know. Um, How's the solo? 
That's compared good. to Imperial Settlers. It's good. I mean, Imperial Settlers makes more sense to play it solo. Yeah. Because you just have the Barbarians, you're going against the Barbarians. For the record, I had, I, I've been playing a lot of games solo lately. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to get a lot of games so we can do our list. top ten list, because yeah. I know you have. That's oh, going to be easy for you. It'll, it'll be hard for me <laughs> to actually get... Yeah, you know, but you have a lot of options. I have a lot of options. I, yeah. By the time when I brought that up to you, I had I played like one game solo. Mm -hmm. So I have a I, I think I can make a really solid list now because now what I started doing for the record is if a game has a solo variant, I'll I'll record that too uh -huh. because that's another that's an untapped there's market. A, there's a big yeah, group of people. and a lot of people are, are like, oh, thanks for this video. So uh -huh. and and I have fun. I sound like a bam like bambling idiot for the entire time because I have to just keep talking by myself. Yeah. Like an insane person. Um, so 50 Excuse per me. state. I, that might fall off your list. It it's might. Like, like, it re what it really needs, and I don't know if they're going to do it, is it needs a a big faction box. Mm. Like, like you know, the the Aztecs, the Amazons. They don't have one of those for yeah. this game. Yeah. And I, they, if they could do something like that that would really mm -hmm. ramp it up or get some get it, people... Yeah, because people, I mean, people forget about it. Yeah, I mean, it's just kind of well. Yeah, they they essentially you know, left it alone and it, started doing Imperial Settlers, yeah, and yeah. now Empires of the North. And Imperial Settlers almost is getting too bloated. Imperial Settlers, well, yeah, you know, I mean, we'll get to this whole sure. deal with it and Empires at some point, but but uh, but yeah. So Fifty First State Master Set, still a great game. It's just falling because it's not getting a ton of play. Okay, all right, fair enough, fair enough. My number 89 is a wonderful two-player game. Um, in all reality, I could not tell you why it's actually at 89, because when I play it, it's it's such a blast. And that is Santorini. Um, an overproduced game, for sure. Uh, but uh, whimsical in its art, and just... If you're, like, I know some people play this without the god powers... I don't. I can't. I can't imagine why anyone would want to do that because the God powers are so much fun. God powers killed it for my wife because I bought it because I thought my wife's gonna love this game. Yeah. And as soon and we played with the God powers and she's just like, nope. We're so really? I, you only really need to keep it. That's so weird. Yeah. Because they're the best part of it. Um. Now. <sighs> now I was. I'm. I agree. I agree yeah. with you. But. Uh, what's what's well. Because some of the god powers are not meant to be played against each other. Mm -hmm. But in the rule book, they tell you, hey, don't do this with this. Mm -hmm. And there's probably even a forum, I would guess, on Board Game Geek that, sure. that says, hey, here's a, ma a ranking of mm -hmm. you don't put these two together because they don't work. Um, but the designers did uh, a pretty good job of that, and I appreciate that. In 2018, it was number 68, so it fell 21 spaces. And in 2017, it was 47, so it's been kind of just... My thing with that is such a short game. Yeah. That I don't think it really matters. Yeah, oh, I have an overpowered god. Exactly. The game's over in 20 minutes. And yeah, you know, hell, not even that. Like, yeah, I sometimes know. I mean, it's just like, okay, really quick. 15. Like, um, and they, they made one expansion, one oh, very, the Golden Fleece, which is which is a variant expansion. I always, well, not variant, a modular expansion, which I always love those. And the, the Golden Fleece one is actually pretty cool because if your worker starts there, then you get the gold. It, it's just one god. Mm -hmm. So now it's not, well, lucky me, I got this one. That sucks to be you. Hey, if your workers are around there, then uh, um, then you get the power. Uh, yes. And the the abilities are just so variable. And, and one of my favorite is the, probably one of the most asshole gods out there. I believe it's, I think it's Atlas. And what he does is he can put a blue, a, a cap, a blue cap on any level. Yeah. So cat hates him she's like <laughs> she's over there and she's like okay i'll build this i'm like yeah i'll go ahead and cap that yeah. and there's so much strategy to this he's like the douchebag of the gods yeah he sucks like <laughs> it's so that's why i like playing as him because i don't it doesn't happen to me uh this is also a game that cat regularly beats me in mm -hmm. like uh based off of just strategy and there are times where what i also like about it is because of this so short this is not uh applicable to longer games but if you can look at the board and be like okay, I can't stop them, so they're just going, you can just call it and then quickly play mm -hmm. again. In longer games, that sucks, because you have to sit there through the yeah. <laughs> remaining hour and like, wow, yeah. there's no way I can win. It's it's a really, really good two-player game. I, I love overproduced games. Like, I don't know, some people say that like it's a negative. It's like, what, what, what do you mean? The game looks amazing. It's it's up higher. It's it, And by the end of the game, it kind of does look like Santorini. Mm -hmm. Very minuscule, minimalist <laughs> view, but... When I see pictures of Santorini, I'm like, I want to go there. Then I remember it's in Greece, 
And then I remember it's an island and I'd have to get a boat there. <laughs> then I remember how I don't want to do that. So it's really good. If you're looking for a two-player asymmetrical, um, like, quick game, Santorini. All right. I think it's mass market, too. I think, like, they, they sell at Walmart. They do stuff, sell at yeah. Walmart, yep. Yep. Um, all right. My number 88. It was 63 last year, 53 the year before that. So 25-point okay. drop is Firefly, the board game. You just played this, didn't you? Yes. Like not too long ago. Epic, yep. big, yep. Um, sprawling. Wow, I'm actually surprised game. it's not higher since you did just play it. Um, it it's what kept it on the here, list. Okay. You know, because it probably would have fallen a lot more. Yeah. Because it, as much as I love the theme of the game, as much as I love the mechanics of the game, mm -hmm. it still just drags ass. <laughs> I mean, it's like the longest damn game in the world. <laughs> I mean, we especially when you play with five. Now yeah. there, there's a variation, uh, a variant that we played with that speeds up the movement phase okay. a lot, a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. um, so that did help, but it's still it's just such a long game. So play here. I mean, I'll always play it over Zaya. I don't care. <laughs> um, there's a. Well, this is gonna give away some. There's another game coming up on my list that is kind of re going to replace this game. Oh, I think I know that, what you're talking that, about. That um, will, but I mean, do you okay? So these types of games mm -hmm. where they're obviously based around a TV show or a movie or anything like that, does the Firefly theme that help? Is why I keep playing okay. it? Okay, okay. Because if it and was I have never seen that show, and everyone like <clears throat> pees on me for it, and it's like, look, I don't, I don't want to watch a show that didn't end. I mean, yeah, it did because of the did. movie, Just but it's like, yeah. <laughs> but um, that, was the movie good? I, I think I ask you that every time. Yeah. The okay. whole thing was good. I mean, they, 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 they did a good job. I mean, it, it should have went a lot longer, but sure. they did a good job yeah. with that movie of closing it up and stuff. Well, so. at least they made the movie, because sometimes it's just like, yeah. wait, so what happened? Oh, it just got canceled. Um, Heroes is a good one. Yeah. A good example of that. But yeah, anyway, so far, but yeah, the, the, the theme is why I keep playing If it didn't have this theme, okay. I, I wouldn't want to waste my time with it. Okay. But it's just awesome because all the characters. Yeah. And they, I like yeah. You pull up, and you you get this crew person. You're like, ah, you know, it just automatically makes you think of that mm -hmm. part of the movie. Mm -hmm. Or when you get the bonnet, his yeah, no idea. Yeah, I mean, you, <laughs> it's, it's stuff that if you watch, you know what this stuff means and and stuff. But but like I said, it's it's really long. This there's a another game that is going that is so much quicker. Yeah. You know and stuff, but is that is that also a factor, wife? shot further back because there was you have kind of a replacement I don't know why I'm looking at this yeah more or less I mean it's 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 hard because this has always been on my list because you know mm -hmm. this is my kind of my space game but then yeah. this has kind of fallen fallen yeah. off a lot but I'm stuff. assuming Zaya is way higher that's the replacement you're talking about Zaya sucks <laughs> Zaya doesn't Zaya doesn't suck like that, it has good aspects but it's it's like when you get all these nerds in a room and they and they they try to throw all their ideas and try to cram them into a little box it's not that the game itself was sucked but about half the stuff in that game would have made it a lot better if you, I agree I, I mean would, they're, I they're like we had all the tiles that there's so much stuff on the board it's like god where where do you everything every yeah. spot I move is, and you kind of you kind of stick to a certain area anyway. yeah so I'm just but anyway I digress anyway so <laughs> number 88 uh, was I thought I don't know what I thought I heard uh, last year was actually number 104, so it oh, rose fine. 16 spaces. Something rose on my list. Uh, and in number 27, in, uh, number 27, in number... In 2017, it wasn't on the list, and I don't I don't even know why. Maybe I just hadn't played at the time. But it was Voyages of Marco Polo. Uh... Yeah. You know, you know how I love me some, some... I, Dice Worker Placement is just... I love it. I love it. It's yeah. so much fun. I love worker placement too. It's the, this list you're going to slowly start to see just from 2017, hell, the 2018, 20, just my sh complete, complete shift in like gaming mm -hmm. wants and needs. Because in 2017 and even before then, it was just everything was great. And, and I love seeing people on the board game group on Facebook and all that, like when they're like, they find a new game and they're just in love with it and new people. It's, it's fantastic because I remember that. Now we've just become so jaded. Like we're just like, mm-hmm, yeah. you can play this, peasant. <laughs> <laughs> but Voyages of Marco Polo is a wonderful dice worker placement game where you uh, roll your dice to place them in certain areas, like a, like a dice worker placement. 
but you also have kind of, it's almost like a Orleans kind of with the bag building it's the dice because you have where you place your dice you see where I'm going with yeah, it because yeah, you also have see. the player that like that you yeah, move yeah, yeah. throughout to get abilities um so you're trying to you can build buildings in certain locations which then give you special abilities to help you get uh get points and um there's a bunch of objectives you can try and meet with that there's also uh that's a lot of points over there but then you also have uh what are they called contracts i think they're trying to fulfill by resources through camels spices and all that it's fantastic now i have heard this that they're remaking it or they're making a second one I, I'm pretty. I think it's just I, I, all I, I want them to do is put their damn expansion back out because it's been out of print. They I did one I, run of their expansion and that's yep, it. Yep. I think I actually I might have it because I think I bought it from a guy in Germany and I was terrified it was going to be in German. And I'm yeah, like, crap. Because the expansion I I want because it has. Yeah. Did oh, you, that's that's yes. Thank you. Did you mention? I did not mention part? the broken <laughs> player powers that well everyone oh. everyone's broken. Yeah. That's it's it's not broken in a negative way. Everyone has an amazing player power. Yeah. So it also includes variable player powers, which is which is awesome. Because um, every single time, I'm like, oh, mine's really good. Oh, yours is really good, too. Oh, so everybody is yours. Everybody thinks everybody else's are broken because yeah. it's, they're just that crazy. Because they're all crazy. And the expansion <laughs> included yeah. more more yeah. of those those people. Um, that's, one of the, that's what makes this game super fun is your player power as well as just the dice. And I really like that too, because the higher the dice, like you have to pay people to mm -hmm. go certain areas or there's like, okay, to go here, you have to place a dice that's higher than the one next to it. So if I start off with a six, it's like, well, you right. better play a six. Um, it's it, the, the sheer variety of the different work replacement spots is awesome. Um, I love the traveling aspect because you need money or camels to be able to go the shorter routes. So mm -hmm. that's another thing to keep in mind and the player powers. And I am, I am like ninety nine percent sure that they are making a second one because really? I remember hearing about it, but no one like Rado talked about it in his podcast. He was mentioning I think it's called just like Marco Polo, maybe like a placeholder, but I'm pretty sure it's the second one to this. Interesting. So maybe they'll do a better job. I don't. I could not tell you who the company was who made this. It was. Uh, uh... <laughs> Give me a second. But was it Z Man? It wasn't Z Man. Uh, actually, it was it Zeman? Might have been because I feel like I, I I remember seeing the little um, little Z at the bottom. I'm scrolling. <laughs> so, but yeah, uh, but what that's the thing with that game is uh, just I, you're gonna see on. I mean, I, I don't know about your list as much, but when I first started doing this, it was Zeman. Okay. Um, <laughs> when I first started this uh, hobby. It was all about the um, Ameritrash, miniatures, dice rolling, mm -hmm. fighting, blah, 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 blah. Yep. And I have made such a turn the last two years into Euro games. Mm -hmm. I have to. And stuff. And my, well, it's because they're no my longer... wife's favorite games, too. Is, yeah. Is... It's because they're no longer boring, hey, right. trade spices. Like, they actually got thematic and hell. Right. Like, you're getting Euro... Essentially, a Euro Ameritrash games where it's now you can actually have a campaign mm -hmm. like an elusive art tabletop RPG with Euro rules because yep. they finally figured out how to do it. And whenever it, that's what makes it amazing because there's almost nothing nothing worse than trying to display a strategy and the or like you have an amazing game and I'll have a bunch of examples coming up, but it's like but the combat is so stilted with I just roll dice. It's like. Yeah, There's a exactly. hundred other examples you could have mm -hmm. done something different. Why do you just go back to dice? Move on. Yeah, um, for sure. But like, that's not to say I still like me Ameritrash, like some oh, Ameritrash games. Yeah. But it like I have to like s flick a switch in my brain to be like, this is the kind of game we're playing now, mm -hmm. versus just going in at will. But anyway, Voyages of Marco Polo is my number eighty-eight. We're at sixteen spots. All right, and this is uh, what also made this rise is Cat likes this game. Yeah, and whenever Kat, whenever I can get Cat to actually like a game that's usually out of her wheelhouse, I'm like, there we go. There you go, perfect. Yep. All right, my number eighty-seven is a new game to the list. Woo! I want to say this is the company's first game. I bought the Kickstarter version of this at Origins this last year, and it is called Space Explorers. Um, no idea. It, yeah, you'll. You 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 might like it. It has old art, so like the box art's like old style, like astronaut okay. art. Um, 
but pretty much how it was touted was the Splendor Killer. Oh, um, okay. So, it is like Splendor, but for gamers. There's a oh, lot okay. of decisions. I remember seeing this of, on Kickstarter, and I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I was walking around Origins, and the day before it opened, okay. and there was a guy there, and he kind of showed it, because I was like, that's on my list to look at. Yeah. And he started talking to me. He's like, I'll just sell you this, the whole Kickstarter deal if you want it, you know? So I spent like 50 bucks, got play mats and all these tokens, all this crap. But, um, you know, if you, if you know Splendor, you, you are buying, you're, it's kind of an, you know, you're buying stuff to give you more resources to buy more stuff and so on and so forth. What this one does is it's kind of the same thing. You're getting workers and stuff, but there's so many more details on each card that mm -hmm. you need to use to be able to, uh, launch spacecraft okay um and you're just getting victory points i mean at, at the end of the day it's the same scoring system mm. but you're there's multiple steps then to get to that yeah where you're getting victory points instead of just saying i want to buy this jewel and buy this jewel and then i have this enough to buy that deal you know right so um it, it would be considered a next step game for after splendor. splendor okay um the art is not I mean, it's like almost the, like the 1950s like the propaganda art. Right. Yeah. Not everybody's going to like the art in, sure. in it. You know, I mean, a lot. There's going to be people that like Splendor over that. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's cool and unique. Yeah, I, I like with, art like that. <clears throat> with it, but um, and it's also based on like there's like actual ships and actual oh okay, deals so it's stuff. realistic like right. that neat. Um, and it's almost kind of like a. It's like a space race because it's purely competitive too because mm -hmm. you're sending stuff off ships and stuff mm -hmm. and all that and it's neat it's kind of it's it's kind of hard to explain like other than it's just like a more complex splendor splendor um but it's out now i mean you can get it okay in places it's 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 definitely worth a shot because yeah. and i've i've never played splendor so i can't splendor I can't would that be comparison. too simplistic for you you I think? think i mean it's too simplistic for me Gotcha. I, I, it's just I, yeah. I bought it. With I know a lot of people talk about it, and I mean, you gotta give credit where credits due. When games like that kind of were the reason why certain games are mm -hmm. coming out now, so they cannot be forgotten. Right. My eighty-seven was number seventy-seven last year, so it only fell ten spots. And every time, whenever I was making the list, every time I'd get brought up, I'm like, no, that is a really good hidden movement game, and it's unique. And it's a theme that I absolutely love, Hunt for the Ring. <laughs> Hunt for the Ring this is... This low, huh? Huh? This low. Huh? Well, it's because of just... There's better games out there. Mm -hmm. Like, like at the end of the day, yeah, this is one of my favorite hidden movement games. Uh, hidden movement is a mechanic that I really like. But this one, it's... I think at the same time, it's also really different from the other one. So it's, it's easier to get some of the other hidden movement games to the table right. than this one. Um, but it's the prequel to uh, kind of like War of the Ring, almost, and you're doing the hidden movement of getting Frodo to uh, bag uh, uh, the, the Prancy Pony, then the second half is, because there's two halves to the game, the second half is you getting from there to Rivendell. Mm -hmm. And what's really neat is the first half is your standard, okay, I'm going to move here, I'm going to move here, and they have to try and find you because the Nazgul are coming. From what I understand, the first half is almost impossible for the hidden player to lose. Um, but it's not so much about him losing the first half, it's about how corrupted he is going to be in the second half. Because the second half is where it gets really interesting. Because right. the second half is you do not control Frodo from then, you pick a set card that he's going to go this path. And you can have him go the shorter path, which is a little bit more risky and takes less time, or the longer path, which has a little bit more uh, options for him, mm -hmm. for them to move. But you control Gandalf trying to keep the Nazgul and thwart the Nazgul, because if they're running around looking and they're like, oh, I'm going to search here, and you say, yep, then they'll know, oh crap, is that Frodo or is that Gandalf? And then right. you can do, like repel them away. It's so, it's so different from your regular just... Okay, I'm just going to keep riding, and if you find me, you find me. If not, that's it. So with this, um, what also makes it really cool is that how the game ends, you can actually set it up for War of the Ring, and it kind of changes the beginning of War of the Ring 
depending right. on you know what happens in this one. So I think that that's really neat because it's made by the same company, Ares Games. And if you want some massive Lord of the Rings night, then you can totally play Hunt for the Ring and War of the Ring and have a full, fully immersive Lord of the Rings experience. Um, so yeah, it's it's really good. I mean, it fell ten spots just for lack of play, and I th I don't think uh, the the friends I played this with I don't think they cared for it for it that much. Right. Um, but the Nazgul also have special powers. They get uh, buffs for for like working together and getting certain cards because it's it's all for them. It's card driven, mm -hmm. and I mean I I liked playing as a Nazgul. I thought it was really cool, but it's a really good one. I like it so. It's my 87. All right. My number 86 is my other new one to the list. You had two? Yeah. Okay. Um, this one, I've only played it twice. <clears throat> so I'm still learning a lot of the deal. But I, it's the theme of it just makes it wonderful. So I don't know if it, how it'll go after this. Is Brook City. Um, is that the Adam Sadler in the... Yeah, it's the, okay. the Sadler Brothers. I, so. I backed their altar quest. Yeah, and they that. just did another... Heroes in Need? Is another one. It's a super oh. like a. You're I went all in on Alter Quests. So. I did too. Yeah, um, I did too. But and everyone was like, everyone says Brook City's really good. It's yeah. It was. Top, it's been fun so far. Yeah, one. it's the police. Okay, the police. When Blacklist Games is who their company That's is, it. but um, yeah. They, I mean, it, they went far enough as like they have the characters, the cop characters as. Uh, you know, like, there's one that's supposed to be, like, Mel Gibson's character in Lethal Weapon. There's oh, okay. one, like, the Beverly Hills Cop, Eddie Murphy and Beverly Hills Cop. Gotcha. They, they, they okay. Kind of I, they, they did like that. Hey. Right. <laughs> um, we didn't have the money for the rights to them, but... Right. And each player has their own little deck of okay. cards that they use for the deal. There's different scenarios that you go through. Um, the Kickstarter version, I don't know if it's retail version or not, because I bought it off of a guy. Um, there's plastic cars. There's your mm. miniatures. Okay. There's... Just all kinds of stuff. And there's scenarios that range from, there's like Miami Vice like scenarios. There's okay. a scenario that you could have gotten that uh, reenacts uh, um, speed. The the bus with oh, the bus? Okay. and stuff. Yeah. There's, and I mean, they, they just. <laughs> Sandra Bullock? Yeah. yeah. Is that the one that, like, if she stops <laughs> the, bus, the bus, it goes blows below 55 off. or whatever, and then the, That's the right. ball goes off. Yeah. So, I mean, they've reenacted all these, like, cop movie why deals. Didn't they, why didn't they just get out of the bus? Like fifty five is not that bad. Just know. roll, drive through a field. Everyone <laughs> then, jumps then, out. Then the, that wouldn't have been a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, so uh, it's it's pretty much just it's the best cop movie or cop game because you know I've done. Um, wasn't there a game called like Police Precinct or yes, something? That's okay. what I was getting ready to say. There was that one which wasn't bad, uh -huh. but it had a lot of holes in it and yeah. a lot of stuff. And then there was um, there was another cop game. I, I can't think head. of one off the top of my head but, right um, now. But this one's like really cool. Like it's just total. You have card. You know, you play it to uh, resolve things. There's powers that you have. Is it uh, co-op? Formants. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're doing these different scenarios. You arrest. You can go and arrest people. You get clues. You get, I mean, it's just. It's it's almost like, I I can't really say sandbox because it, I mean you are following a mm -hmm. a deal. That you can just go crazy in it and do whatever and everything, but uh, I want to explore it more mm -hmm. um, to know if it's going to fall off, stay higher, whatever you right. know. Um, it definitely has a unique uh, a theme yep. to it that actually is finally done well. Neat. So it may it has a chance of growing. Neat. Better than falling. Cool, cool, cool. All right, yeah. my eighty six is new to the list. Uh, mainly because the other version of this game I don't like as much, and I finally played this one and like it quite a bit, and that is Clank in Space. Specifically, Clank in Space, because I don't really like the original Clank. Um, and I haven't tried Clank Legacy, so I don't know if, if that's any better. But Clank in Space is a deck building game where you are uh, traversing through a spaceship and you're trying to get treasures it's still relatively like the other one but uh you it, it the the map makes it a lot better because there's not really tiers mm -hmm. like okay well i'm gonna go three steps in get this tenor then just leave it's like okay um like you're incentivized and still like almost relatively forced to at least make it into the freaking spaceship and get a good thing then try and get out but what makes this really cool 
is you you have a deck of cards it's a deck builder and you're moving and you you make noise throughout it and those tokens like get put into a bag and at a certain point a certain number of tokens get drawn and then if you if your color cube is drawn then you're taking damage from this alien mm -hmm. uh, whatever he is <clears throat> and if you die you die and you have ways to mitigate noise you have some really cool items that are like oh this is awesome for fighting oh but it costs it costs causes a lot of noise it's a solid deck builder i i really like it i love the way the map is laid out because it's a modular board so that makes a lot of fun more to do i feel in the map as well and they just i think they just released an expansion for it and they have another one an apocalypse expansion i think is what it's called and i haven't tried that but like it's it's a it's a deck builder with with a pretty strong theme and for my displeasure of the other one i gave this one a shot and i was very pleased with it i have the first one i haven't played it yet <clears throat> there was just like i said the first one just it bugged me that you could get a treasure early on and just bail and hell even because it was like a, a it was like two tiers like and if you made it to the top tier but died, then you still got to score. Mm -hmm. And it's like, but you died. Why you should, like, that should be the risk. Otherwise, there's really no risk. And um, Clink and Space handles that a lot better. So, I'd yeah. recommend that one. Yep. That's what I hear is that one's better. But so, uh, actually, I want to try the Legacy. I kind of want to try the Legacy too, but. Or the, what is this? The Something Incorporated. Um, there's an expansion that brings in. They have uh, a. Dungeons and Dragons, something no upgraded. idea. But they have they have a bunch of expansions for the original. They have like a Pharaoh expansion mm -hmm. and, and other ones. So hopefully sunken they treasure, start sunken treasure. Sunken maybe. treasure, yeah. So hopefully they do more Clank and Space um, expansions. That that'd be nice. All right. So eighty five. Eighty five. I yellow or yellow, however you want to say it. Um, is the company? It was ninety one last year, unrated the year before. I still have yet to get the big board for it. Hmm. Um, and this is Bunny Kingdom. Yep. <clears throat> um, still haven't played it. Yeah, I need to get the big board. Just, uh, you know, just, it, it's never in print. They haven't done mm. it yet. Because um, the board... But like the new game, it, doesn't the, just the so regular game come with the big board now? I think it does now. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Just buy the board again, sell the other one. <laughs> uh, yeah, like, true, there yeah. you go. Um, but... Uh, They've come out with an expansion for it. I need to try mm. for it as well. But um, you just have just a shit ton of bunnies on your board by the time this is over. That's why they needed a bigger mm -hmm. board because if you play a game, then just rabbits everywhere. Yeah. Um, well, but that's it, what they do. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but pretty much what it is is it's it's a kind of a area control, not really a war game, but it's area control stuff. You're just spreading your your influence with them. You're taking. Uh, you're getting taking control of fiefdoms and all that stuff. You score tons and tons of points in this game. Like, um, it's not uncommon to get the high, high, almost two hundred over wow. two hundred. I mean, you get a ton of points. Okay, that's one of the reasons this game isn't lower or isn't higher on my list. I guess mm -hmm. it's just because it's so mathy at the end. The scoring, gotcha. the scoring. <laughs> it's just like because when you get those last few turns, mm -hmm. there's so much stuff going on the board. Um, that's one reason why having the bigger board is better because then I mean because so many things are so packed in there yeah. you can kind of see yeah but uh and that's a factor a lot for some games it's yeah. just like what the <clears throat> hell were they thinking and right. it can ruin your experience because everything obviously with board games is so hands on right um, so it doesn't you, you see Bunny King the first time I heard about it it was like oh, why the hell do I want bunny rabbits yeah you know but then it actually ends up turning into a really good. Uh, Area control style game. There's that's that's what a lot of people say. And all that stuff. I, so. I really do need to get it because I know Cat's interested in the theme, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm interested in the gameplay. Mm -hmm. Not so much. I mean, not so much the theme. I'm not like rabbits. Hell yeah! <laughs> Let me jump on that. Uh, but you've talked it up. I have heard no one yeah. say anything negative except for the board. But if the, the if you buy it now and you yeah. get the bigger board, then yeah. okay. The expansion adds. I think someone with the clouds. I, I, I yeah. Wonder, like if it's another board, I'm wondering or no something. idea. I don't know much about no it. But, but yeah, you're right. It is something in the clouds. Or... Yeah. But um, it's definitely a cool game. I mean, and it's not super expensive either. No. No. But just be ready to do a lot of math <clears throat> because there's a lot That's of point fine. scoring at the end. I've played Power Grid. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> 
So. Yeah, it's a good one. So, uh, 85 with Bunny Kingdom. 85. My number 85 makes me sad because it was number 92, so it rose seven spots. That's not why it makes me sad. It makes me sad because the company basically discontinued any support for it, and they, they came out. At least they said they were like, hey, we're done making expansions for this. So I, I got to give them props to that, but it makes me sad because I really like this game. Plat Hat. It's uh, Guardians. Oh, okay. So that gay gave up on it already, huh? Yeah, like they said, they're they're they don't make any money off it, and to their to their credit, this is the most generic ass fucking title <laughs> ever. Like, and I remember a guy commented on my run through for it, and he said this game is really good, and if it didn't have an Overwatch feel like it does, like he's like, would you ever look at this game on the shelf? And I'm like, absolutely not. Like based off the title alone, no, mm -hmm. I would never look at it. Um, but, uh, last year at Gen Con, I tried it, and, uh, yeah, and I was like, oh, this is a lot of fun, okay, I, yeah, because you have your own, uh, individual hero deck, or, or, uh, fighter deck, and you have three ultimates, mm -hmm. um, well, you have special abilities, and, and, uh, well, you have three ultimates because you, you merge, uh, you control three heroes, because um, it's kind of like that smash up with the bases, the different bases, mm -hmm. and you have a tug of war to, okay, well, if I have more people here, then it's going to come my way. If I defeat one of your guys over here, it comes my way, and then at the end of the round, if it's on your side, you take it, and the first gotcha. one to a certain amount of points comes out, and each base has a special ability. Um, so you're controlling three heroes, and that's where the three ultimates... So every character has their own ultimate. That right. You play cards to be able to get charge-up tokens, and then you can pop them off, and they're all amazing. They did release one hero pack that I think had four, four heroes, and they were set to release another one, but then they canceled it. And Plaid Hat, if you were listening... Keep making stuff like I the, the this game could have been awesome. It could have been like you could have had a shit ton of just different variety of heroes competing against one another, um, and it they just they just stopped. I think a lot of it is with with them um, when they were all by themselves. They were their own company. Mm -hmm. and they really went for you know that they did they stuck with Summoner Wars. They stuck yeah. with stuff like yeah. that. But then they got bought up by Z Man. Then they got mm -hmm. bought up by Asma Day. So I think now I think they kind of get control yeah. on what they yeah you know because if they're not if Asma Day's not if it's not that's not making money then then they're, they're like cancel so that's true so because I, I think they've given up got yeah. lost a lot of their control that's true that's a good point I, I didn't think of that because when I <clears throat> when I asked the designer at Gen Con I asked him about it, I'm like do you play Overwatch he's like yeah that was the influence for the game because mm -hmm. I love Overwatch I don't love what Blizzard's doing because they're a shithole company now. Um, but Overwatch is still a lot of fun, and this reminded me very heavily of that, because you can definitely tell, oh, this character was inspired. Like, there's a Valkyrie character that's mm -hmm. a healer. Okay, that's Mercy. Um, and so, it, and the gameplay was really solid. I love the 1v1 card card play with stuff like this. Uh, Smash Up would be, like, probably a top 10 game if it worked really well with two. Right. Um, so this was kind of like that as well. Um, but you're right, because I asked him if he planned on supporting it, and he said yes, and they immediately almost released mm -hmm. a pack and then had another one on the way. They said if we can come back to it in the future, they will. They're not going to. No. Pretty much all Plaid Hat makes are the storybook games now. Mm -hmm. Like, Coman... the ones that sell. Yeah, Stuff Fables, Comanauts, and then the Aftermath about the sentient animals. Like, they're neat. The storybook thing is really cool, but at some point it gets old. Make, make yeah. different games. Um, not games like Abomination Era Frankenstein. <laughs> not games like that. Uh, did you play that one? Oh, I did. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Just wait till we do our other list next month. Yes, yes. Um, but Guardians is, is really cool. I I mean, I'll, and I'll probably always keep it because if they're not going to make it, then it might sell for a lot later. But yeah. that's not why I'm keeping it. I think it's a really good 1v1 game yeah. with, a, with a unique theme. So. All right. Well, my number 84 was... Uh, 90 last year. Okay. So gone. And it went 55 up. the year before that. It so went, went way down. down. <laughs> way down and a little bit up. Right. And it's because I need to get the expansion. Yeah, because a this is the only version of this game that I like or will play. Um, and that's Pandemic the Cure. Oh, okay. Um, and there's an experimental meds expansion that I'm trying to wait until it gets cheap because it's still 34 bucks for this expansion. I'm like, wow. I'm like, 
I want to find it, like, go down, like, For a dice game, yeah. or whatever, you know? Um, but this is, to me, and I know it's unpopular opinion, is the best form of Pandemic because it's so much faster, it's dice-driven. Technically, it's not the fastest it's, one anymore. Um, well, <laughs> it takes, uh... It takes no time to well, yeah, because the, the real the rapid one. response yeah. one, yeah. Um, but uh, it's just, have you played this one? The no, Cure? that's the only one I haven't played. Um, it's it's just neat and they're a I mean, virus one or whatever, which yeah. no one counts. Um, it more or less just it simulates uh, pandemic. You have your plastic ring and it has the pegs in it that does for outbreaks and all that stuff. You're rolling all these different colored dice and you're placing them on the continents, mm -hmm. um, and then once they get a certain number of dice and they'll explode and spread to the other continents mm. and stuff like that and you're yeah. you're going around with your people who have each each role has their own uh unique set of dice yep so and you're rolling those some of them have maybe cure or or helicopter you know to travel people around the mm. ponds and all that stuff it's the same same roles yeah. generally for stuff and i think that's what the exp expansion does is add more characters more okay. dice. I think it adds maybe another virus, possibly, or something Neat. like that. Neat. Um, but you're trying to get all these meds into the middle, and then you, wait, you there's a jar symbol on the dice, and what those are is that, that will take one of your dice, and you set it back here, and you put... So it takes that dice out of the middle, keeps your dice out of your dice pool, though. Oh, okay. And after you've gotten, like, let's say you're going for blue, mm -hmm. the blue uh, disease, you can go two or three of those with your jit, and then you roll all three of them, and you have to beat a certain number okay. for it to be cured. Gotcha. Um, and then after it's cured, then it's quicker, just like the other yeah. game. It's easier to get rid of those. Mm -hmm. um, so if the bag of dice runs out, um, you're done. Yep. Um, if their outbreaks go too far, you know, it's the same same kind same of scenarios. Goes. It's just in a faster, um, better looking, in my opinion, because I'm a dice guy. I like dice. Um, less table hoggy version. You know, it's just, it's just a little circle ring, right? That sits in the middle, and you have a couple cards, and you yeah. just roll dice. You know, it's, yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, pandemic the cure. It's have, just. Have you tried the Fall of Rome? No. One. I have not. So that one has a solo variant, and also plays really different from the other ones. Uh, I know for a fact you wouldn't like the rapid response one because you don't like real time and you don't like pandemic. So those are two things that you would just hate. <laughs> I think it's really, really fucking good, um, but I also really like Pandemic, so, uh, and yeah, the dice one just, I was like, why would I play that one whenever I have yeah. the other ones, so, I mean, if it works for you, it works for you, but you should give, I think I think you should at least give Fall of Rome a chance, because it's the one that feels less like Pandemic, yeah. out of all of them, even the Iberia and Rising Tide don't even, if you want to buy that one, you can just throw it away immediately, <laughs> just so no one else has to play it. But for the most part, I think they're doing a really good job with different types of pandemic. Right. But okay, so my number eighty-four was number seventy in twenty eighteen. Um, so it fell fourteen spots, and in twenty seventeen it was fifty-four. So it's fallen back. And I think last year this was the only game I had on my list that I didn't own, and now I own it again because I, I remember liking it. And I was like, okay, so I got it. I got it back, and it's the others. Yes. So the others is an awesome theme, ba dependent around the seven deadly sins. It's a one versus all, which really isn't being made a lot. I'm. I feel like. Yeah. I feel like, like not a lot of people like the one versus all. Um, most want you know. Or they come out with an app that simulates the that's one. True. And that's true. That's true. Into a pure co -op. Which I am all for. Yeah. I am all for it for that. Um. Because it's difficult. It's if you're okay. Well, it's just me. Because in the one versus all, it feels like oh, one side's overpowered. But if it's an app, it's the app that's overpowered, and we can at least work together. Right. Um, so, but with the others, I still very much like the one versus all mechanic. Um, one person plays one of the seven deadly sins, which his with his unique, you know, minions, and it's scenario based. So through one scenario. The other players, the heroes that share the heroes, which is pretty cool. Uh, there are just a variety of just different types of of people and creatures and things that all have a unique ability, and they're trying to meet like one of the top objectives. Once they meet that, they go down to the next one, then they meet that, then they have to go to the final one, and then and then uh, win that scenario. And there's a bunch because I have everything for it again. What sucks about this one is there needs to be. 
I, I, I've I've went on Broken Token. You know, you can go in there and right. submit like mm -hmm. ideas. I'm like the others. Like get because they made one for Mansions of Madness, Elder yeah. Tor, uh, Dinosaur Island. Uh, those are the three big ones that have come out of late. But I'm hoping for one with the others. Um, but it's really cool. This is one of those games that you as especially the the sin player you just have a hand both sides of like handfuls of dice and it's just like boom okay here's what i got i got 90 hits did i kill you so and you can try and uh, kill them through their health or try and corrupt them mm -hmm. uh, or they actually no they can choose to take corruption to be able to get like an ability um but it's not a good thing for them to do right um, so there's different types of classes for the players to be, like support, your DPS, your tanky kind of people. And I, I like the idea that they share a, a common pool of heroes. So if one person on their side dies, they're not out, they pick the next top, and you beat them by uh, depleting their, their available heroes. So even though it feels like, and I, whenever I played this uh, the first time, I, I told them it's going to feel like you are losing and it's meant to so i prepped them because if you go in there thinking like oh right. god like <laughs> this game is unbalanced it's not it just feels that way at times but it's a really solid one it stays on the list it's at 80 84 because of its theme i actually do like the mechanics of this, this is a fun ameritrash one and it was good enough for me to buy it all back again right um so that's why number 84 Yep, that's, I haven't played that one yet. Um, all right, my number 83 is kind of one of my good uh, gateway games I like to play. You guys have played it before. Did we like it? Uh, I think so. Okay. Um, it was 57 last year, so I'm not sure why it dropped so much. I don't know if it's just because there's other stuff. Um, and then 59 the year before that, so it went up a little bit and then fell. Fell a lot. Bit. And it's a grab well. Oh, okay, yeah. Um... It's space game. It's got a lot. It's super simple to learn. It's but it's hard to master <laughs> if that makes sense. Because yeah, because pretty much you have three things that can happen to your ship. Three kinds of cards. There's there's one type that will pull you towards the closest object. Uh, there's one that pushes you away from the closest object, and then there's the tractor beam that pulls all the ships towards you. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing is you start in the center of a singularity or like a black hole kind of thing. Um, and you are working yourself around a spiral and trying to be the first person to escape the, the grab well. Um, and so it's, it's, there's a lot of tug of war going on because you may jump out to an early lead, but there's not as many repel cards. So you are going to fall back to the pack mm -hmm. and it's just kind of back and forth a lot. And there's derelict ships that'll be out there that will kind of mess with the math. And what happens is when you draft your cards, um, you will you'll pick a card, you'll put it face down, everybody resolves, and then they resolve in alphabetical order. So, you know, from A to Z, they'll go first. So you may have been expecting to go forward on a repel, but if somebody moved and screwed that plan up, then you yeah, they may, get ahead of you, then you yeah, push then away from them, and you're just right. Like, but Ugh. you have a once per round emergency stop to to save yourself from that. Mm -hmm. So. It's just it's such a simple game, but yet it's just hilarious it, it sometimes is, because you yeah. just you just like hosing yourself. For right, you're and, like, okay, I'll repel. Okay, this time I'll go ahead. <laughs> oh nope, still going back. <laughs> yeah, and so it's just you can't it's you can't play this game seriously. Sure, it's it's just yeah, it's and uh, a game may take thirty minutes. You know, right, but, it it was it was a lot of fun. Um, what I was thinking, not so much to change that game. But that could, that's a mechanic that could be that should be used somewhere else. Like I haven't seen it anywhere, but that's that's a really fun type of card reality. Um mm -hmm. where that 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 that's an that's a unique one. Um it's a unique game, I think. And um It's it's a good one. Yeah, Cat and I enjoyed it quite a bit. It's hard to I mean, I think you can, you can still buy it, I think. It's Cryptozoic that's is right. the company. But it's um it's it doesn't get a ton of talk no even when it first came out there was a little bit but it's well, just it's under nice, the radar it's, it's be a, a cool good top 10 filler. under the radar yeah. games it's just a cool little filler you know it's 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 a good one i pull it out along with others mm -hmm. um that are really good with just you know 
Um, yeah, because how many how many does it play play four? Four. Okay. Yeah. Can you imagine a game like that was six or something? Christmas. Just be like, okay, <laughs> well we're here for an hour. Um, yeah, I think it was one of those that worked really well with three because of the the mm. derelict ships yeah. that are there. If those weren't there, I think the game would actually be really bad. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that was in playtesting. That's probably why they probably decided to throw those yeah. out there. Uh, all right, my eighty three. I'm curious if this will be higher on your list. You think we'll have any crossover? <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I wonder if we'll have any crossover in the same section. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. Not this, um, uh, not this section. You don't think? <laughs> no, probably you, you don't like the other two games that are on this list. Gotcha. Okay, <laughs> that's fair enough. Um, my, my 83 was number 34 in 2018, so it fell 49 spaces. And in 2017, it was number 45. Um... <clears throat> and the reason why this one kept jumping back is because while still really, really good, there are a bunch of other better card games, and this is Elysium. So Elysium doesn't get as much love as it should, uh, both from the creators of the game and from uh, the people playing games. Uh, but this is a is similar to... What other game did you just say? Valley of the Kings. Valley of the Kings, where you are... Uh, drafting cards from from the pool by what's this is a really neat mechanic. You have four pillars of colors, and the cards require a, a combination of, of the colored pillars. So it's like okay, you have re uh, yellow, red, blue, and green, and you're like okay, these are my four, so I can take any card out there. Then I take a card and I place it up at the top, and then you can start using its ability. And uh, then you have to get rid of a pillar, but you don't have to get rid of a pillar that matches the color of what the card you just took. You can just get rid of any any color. Right. So then you have to be smart about okay, what am I trying to get? And you can get hosed by okay, I don't need the I don't like I don't need the red one, and then I because I want that blue one. So you get rid of the red one, then someone takes the blue one. And you're like, okay, well now there's nothing left. Yeah. So there's a lot of strategy in which cards you're going to draft. Uh, what makes this game really unique is there's like ten. Gods, it's Greek mythology themed. Yes. Each god has their own deck and their own card base, like what they're based around. And you take like five of them and you shuffle them together, and that's your card yeah, pool. That's four or five. Yeah, and what's really neat is at the back of the book, the rule book, it tells you what kind, like, hey, what kind of game do you want? Do you want a high scoring one? Do you want a cutthroat one? Do you want a card innovation? Do you want a low, like, and it tells you which gods to to pick and shuffle. So that's always really neat. One of my favorite decks to put in is the Ares. Because you there's almost no player interaction. There's not a whole lot of, like, take that. Right. Uh, which I do like. I like that Ares is obviously the god of war. So he is all about combat. But instead of him, you get prestige points. Which, whoever has the most prestige points at the end of the game gets, like, a shit ton of points. Um, so I always like including him because I, I love endgame scoring stuff. Uh because I try to play for that instead of points throughout the game. And it's it's just really neat because you have to make a decision at some point to move your cards down into your Elysium. And there's uh, two types of set bonuses, either family, same type of card, or or le legacy, legend, legend, which was rows and numbers. And you get a bunch of points for that too. So this one was just, it's Space Cowboys, I think. I, I, I know we've talked about it before, but I've we, we they need, it needs an expansion. They need something. They've talked about an expansion, but it keeps getting halted. So it's in limbo right now. Yeah. And Space Cowboys is too busy making their shit Time Stories games. So, uh, well, now they're doing the Time Stories like Revelation or yeah, whatever, yeah. which I think they're just doing, it's a deck of cards. Smart on them. I'm going to try mm -hmm. it because that could be, that could be, better than mm -hmm. the rest of their time stories which was awful and they're also doing their unlock stuff right. which i will praise them for their unlock games those unlock games are a lot of fun yeah but elysium's a good one my number 83 it was 151 on my list didn't make your list huh okay no, because i wasn't sure if it was gonna i haven't be played it in probably two three years that's fair and it needs an expansion yeah you know we've talked i guess about we that. say in I, okay so to be fair when we say it needs an expansion, I think it's because we like the game so much, yeah, we just yeah. want more. I mean, there's um, a lot of gods. There are a lot of gods in there. There's a lot of variety, yeah. a lot of combinations, like you said, uh, that it doesn't it doesn't need an expansion. It just, we want an expansion. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And if I did, I mean, like, I, it hasn't hit the table because, I mean, 
maybe you and one other person would be the only people that would play it because I know mm-hmm. my wife would she doesn't like that right. kind of stuff and right stuff that so just wouldn't ever just would never hit the table yep yep all right so, all right so we're on 82 mm-hmm. all right first one of the ones you don't like um so grab well my last one was my a filler game this okay. is also a filler game um it was 39 last year wow 31 the year before that Dang. so it's falling a little bit went up and then whoop um 50 spaces yeah it, eggs and empires yeah um, just it has um so you're coming around no, I'm kidding. well no it's, it, <laughs> I it's, know. it'll never fall off this list it, it's just gonna kind of However, because it's it is my well, they're it and one other one are my small box like card games mm-hmm. for stuff. But um, it's you know everybody has the same deck. You're you're face down putting a card out. You reveal. You're trying to grab the positive eggs and not get the negative eggs. You play three rounds of going through your ten card deck, mm-hmm. and then whoever has the most points wins. I mean, that that's that's the that's rules. It. Yep. Um, the more people you play with, the funner it is because the you have a lot of um, a lot of craziness start happening with mm-hmm. some of those cards work better when there's more people. I like think the, I would would have liked that game more with more people. Yeah. Because in in a three player game doesn't. Yeah. Justify in in that. the game because it's either okay, well uh, I'm gonna play this card that lets me give a negative to someone. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I have two options, mm-hmm. and it's like, well, you took a really good one last time, and right. it's like, so then. Basically, that entire game, and I've only played it once at, with three players. Like, not only was I given a negative one, I had to take a negative one too. So I was just getting double hose right. the entire time, and I'm like, "Yeah, this isn't fun." <laughs> and that's the caveat when you know before we played that, I was like, you know, it's it works it works for three, but it's not the best yeah. for three. It, it plays up to six. Yeah. Um, what's what's the sweet spot? Five or it's six. Just the most. The most. The okay. most you can get. Gotcha. I mean, it's 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 playable at three. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you can actually play with two. Oh God! <laughs> I know. I've never, I've, I've never played it with two, but it, it actually allows, has rules for two. Gross. Um, but five to six is the best, just because then everything's spreading out. You have more cards out in the middle, but then stuff gets spread. Yeah, more. Story, exactly. You know, and, exactly. And, and stuff like that. So That's it's, the same with Champions of Midgard. Like right. so you're spreading out the the um, negative shame points. Which, more. when you we we need to get three or four players on that. Playing with the expansions, champions of Midgard. Sure. Because yeah, absolutely. You, I think. I, I think really I think would like it a lot. Nice place, but st- I think you would yeah. really be all over that. Um, but um, but, and so that's why I'm not crapping on eggs. It's not right, that right. I don't like it. I did not like. Oh yeah, yeah that no, game. Yeah, for sure. Um. So anyway, the uh, eggs and empires. You know, it's still one of my go-to uh, little filler card mm-hmm. games. Did we play a game before that? Before we switched to eggs and empires. Yeah. I feel like we did, yeah. but I don't remember what it was. I can't remember because what it was. Because I've also been in the situation, one time I played News at 11, which is a party yeah. improv game, then I swapped to Mission Red Planet, so that's why I didn't like Mission Red Planet first. I wonder if the game we played before was so... I, I, I couldn't quite... Because if, if we were playing Eggs and Empires, if we had started with that, maybe I would have been like, oh, okay, this is the kind of game it is. Yeah, because, it, again, it's a game you really can't be serious about. Exactly. Because... Because, and I was already, I think I was already in like serious mode. Yeah. So I was like, I can't remember. We did play some before that though, because I can't remember what it was. But anyway. Was it Downforce? Because, uh, or did we play that another maybe, time? Because I didn't play for Downforce either. So it's, so I'm, I, I do want to try Eggs and Empires again because I, I know I like games where you have to kind of read your opponents and mm-hmm. uh, do more eggs come out the more yeah. players there are. Yeah. yeah. So more options of being mm-hmm. like, okay, so I want the, I want the big one. But I could, I can try and play it for the smaller one. Well, no. and just this cards interactions because some cards fire like a three will fire before an eight. Yeah. So, but that doesn't happen all the time with three players. The more players there are, the more chance your three can benefit you. That's true. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or the dark priestess, the nine. That if anybody else plays, plays a nine, oh, that's like out. yeah, that, that's most so likely. So it's like when you have eight people, it's like, oh man, this is real. <laughs> this, this is the big risk. You know, it's like, or you risk it when there's only one positive and they're all negatives mm-hmm. out there because if you're going to get it that's a high enough number you may get the positive that's true you know that's i mean true. it's yeah there's, there's just a lot so, of so of, i would i would say stuff. i don't like that game i think i just had a bad first yeah, first impression play more people for sure so, so. yep all anyway right. yep that's mine exit empires 82 my number 82 was number 99 last year row yeah. 17 spaces and number 66 
the year before. I was really hoping this would be like 88 or 77 or something and just stay in that the double digits. Um, and that is a game, this was my very first run through for the channel. That's not why it's on the list, but it's just, it, I've come a long way from doing that because I tried to do it the Rado style, the handheld. Mm -hmm. Boy, that is not for me. <laughs> to Arkham? Legends of Andor oh, was oh, the very okay. first one I did. I was going to do it solo, and... I still never played that game. <laughs> Legends of Andor is a wonderful campaign-driven puzzle game, is is yeah. what it is. Like, if people are going in there thinking, oh, this could be kind of a dungeon crawler, or no, 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 no. It is it is a puzzle game. Um, so in Legends of Andor, you uh, it's scenario-based, and there's three big box campaigns mm -hmm. for it. And so there's, like, this huge overarching story... <clears throat> and uh, you have certain objectives to me based off the scenario, the scenario cards and certain things will happen. There's a track and all that. But you have a specific character that's a special ability, and you are you're you're moving around the board trying to um, like defeat monsters, but mainly complete your your objective. This is where it gets interesting because you don't run out and try and fight and kill. Uh, as many monsters as possible because mm -hmm. when each monster you defeat moves the track up and you're you're on a strict right. timer so you have to be like okay and they're all the board it's kind of a tower defense a little bit because the board has numbers and arrows that all inevitably lead to the castle mm -hmm. and the castle can only take so many hits before you lose the scenario and so they'll move but the way they move is like okay so they follow the arrow and it's based off of the types of monsters they go right. in a certain order so it's like if one moves here well they hopscotch over another one so it's like oh crap so you have to plan okay how are they going to move and should we just let this one go and go in and because you can uh save civilians which once you bring them to the castle they become an extra hit point essentially yeah. for for your castle right um it's just it's really really cool i love the scenario base i love the puzzle huge shout out because it's standees uh, they have a front and back, yeah, I uh, remember that. and yeah. and no one does that. No one does that, and I love that because it's just aesthetically pleasing. You'll have the same side. I I think it's really cool. Um, and to be fair, I haven't I haven't played all of it. Um, I've only played uh, like I've only played the base game, so I haven't tried the other two. But they also have a ton of smaller box expansions that just add some more scenarios and more more unique characters. It's a cool one. This one, this is actually a game that's going to be coming to the channel as a series uh, pretty soon because I'm slowly trying to redo older videos because mm -hmm. the, or especially the Legends of Andor and earlier ones are really bad. Right. And I'm trying to get them to the format I have now. And this would just be a lot of a lot of fun because it's very very stressful, very thinky, but a simple game to play too. Right. So that's my number eighty two. All right. Now let's see the other one that you said I don't like. <laughs> yeah, and it probably wouldn't be in the spot. It should be higher. This game? Yes. Really? Okay. Yes. So is this your first mistake you're seeing? No, it's not a mistake. It's just I played it last night. And, oh. <laughs> and it should it would be higher. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um. So this one, Gale Force Nine. Ah, uh, uh, it was. Zaya. Okay. <laughs> you know, it was forty-one last year. Okay. It was seventeen the year before that. Gale Force Nine. And it is Spartacus. Oh, the game okay. Of Blood and Treachery. Okay. You're only saying that because you happen to have a good game. <laughs> well, no, no. I, it's just you know the last I time I had played it was. Was it with Cat and I? And I. Well, no, that was two times okay, ago. Okay, and I but the Time before that, it was okay. You know. Yeah. But this last game just showed me why. It was so high because yeah. you played a full complement of five players. Yeah, it took three hours, but I mean, we all were we were being nice to each other. We were backstabbing each other. We were, but it wasn't um, like a fuck it, you kind right. of backstab. And we yeah. all we all had eleven influence. Yeah, going into the last round, so anybody just, it was anybody's game just fired on all cylinders. And, that and, game, it, huh? and, and it was just like I hadn't had a smooth game like that for. I was about to ask, how often does that happen? It it's not. I mean, I don't play the game a ton. Yeah. I mean, I that's the third time I've played that game in the last year and a half yeah. or so. I mean, probably you know because it been a while. Omit the one that Cat played. and I played because I did not like it. Um, probably once again player count. It is. It, it has. It has a lot for of games, especially like stuff. that. What I've learned is if it's a cutthroat game, you need even amounts mm -hmm. like five. 
Well, five, just, five just more you, than three. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, especially with Spartacus with the expansions because they have the they have the festival Primus mm -hmm. where you can put two for two v two in there and all yeah. that stuff. But, and at the same time, sorry, I keep interrupting. No, you're good. Uh, at the same time, probably don't play with someone who's a Care Bear player because Cat does not like mean games. She's not a mean person. She right. hates cutthroat games. So it's it it was essentially me and you. Yeah. And Cat was just kind of there, and I hate being sitting there like, fucking do this, right. because I can't be the only one being attacked. <laughs> and she's like, I know she doesn't want to do it, but it's like, that's the game, so... Well, like, and I'll tell you, last night, I made a point to try playing in a different way. Really? Okay. I did not do anything negative to anybody the entire game. Really? Nothing. I was, I told everybody the truth. Now, they didn't trust me. That's their <laughs> fault. Like, I, I had Jason over there, and I was like, I was like... Let me your influence, and I, and and we'll fire off this card. Mm -hmm. It'll help both of us, you know. Mm -hmm. And he was at one of my times of playing it before, where I totally screwed somebody over. Yeah. He didn't trust me, so he didn't get the benefit. So I asked his brother. Mm -hmm. His brother took it. We both benefited. You know, I didn't lie one single time, and it that, worked that that game. And it worked right. So I mean, there's a way you can you can be you can be honest honest and still do well. You can also be honest until the very crucial but point at the end of that. I would say that would only work if you have a big amount of players because yeah. when you when you have like we had the same thing three players, mm -hmm. you know you have to somebody has to fight somebody yeah. has to and, and there's more it's more cutthroat the less number there are mm -hmm. when you're bigger you can be more diplomatic and you can sit back yeah. and you can because yeah. I only fought one time in the arena that whole night uh, you're, that, oh it was, because it this, people pick Who's fighting? Yeah, like you, 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 right. you wager for the ho to host the games, and then they pick. Who so you got that. eleven influence through cards and through betting. Through cards, just doing different stuff, doing my ability. That's pretty cool. Um, you know, I mean, it's, yeah. so you can you can. It's pretty play cool it, that you can do that. You know, so I would say again, if you want this game to be firing on cylinders, hit that five. You can play it with six. I've never played it with six. Mm -hmm. Five's been the biggest I've ever played it with. But um, yeah. You know, well, the time before we played it with three with you, the time after that I played it with three mm -hmm. with me and the Chads. Um, and it was it was okay. Probably I mean, better, it, but they're also... But five, it, it yeah. was perfect. Yeah. Those two guys are a lot more chill than yeah. I am too. So they're probably not as, like... Uh, like Because they just kind of play just to be like, ah, and especially Fletcher, he, uh, he just likes to see what he can do. And right. it's like, I'm just like... Ah! <laughs> But, um, so, this game, I, I would probably, gosh, it's at 81 right now. Yep. Yep. If, if, if I would have done this list before. Let me ask you this. Is it accurate prior to literally oh, yeah, yeah. yesterday? Yeah, it was. Okay. Yeah, it was. Because the games in front of her are pretty darn good. I, I mean, it would probably be about seven or eight spots higher, I would okay. say. I mean, it's, so it's not far off. Yeah. But, um because of the limitations of needing to have mm -hmm. that deal and it being such a long game it all falls into that firefly sure thing yeah. where you have that the long game so which is another gale force nine game yep um gale yeah, force nine also made the fire firefly brigand brigands and brown coats which yeah, ended up not being that it was it was a game i played at gen con last year and ended up not liking no, it robert whenever. has it yeah, I mean, he's a so. huge Firefly fan anyway. Yeah. The Firefly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I did that. Uh, yeah, so Spartacus, it's all, especially that game, it's all mindset. Player count's a huge thing. So I'm not going to say, I definitely, based off my experience, I definitely hate Eggs and Empires and Spartacus, but that's because I had two not realistic expectations to play. Yeah. So I do want to try it again. And I want to, like, I'm coming to the point where if I really hate a game, but I know I can pinpoint why I didn't hate it and if it's controllable. Like, if it's a bad game, mm -hmm. then it's like, no, player count or whatever, that doesn't fix right. it. The game's right. just bad. With those two, I think player count was the right. factor. If so. we ran a five-player game, mm -hmm. whether you know whether you had those other guys in and yeah. stuff, everything, I think it would probably be a... It'd be a lot better. Yeah. One of my friends I have, Devin, I think that'd be right up his alley because he's, he's very aggressive. Not as, he's just he's something else. Love him. Love him, though. All right. All right. My 81 is a game that I've been telling you to play forever because it's fantastic. 
Last year, it was 63, so it fell 18 spots. And the year before that, it was 19. So this game has fallen like 50 it's, it's spots. It's fantastic. <laughs> 50 spots and then 18 spots. And it is Leathers from Whitechapel. I want that game. I, you know, it, okay, okay. <laughs> Miniature Market yep. had it on the drop. Uh -huh. Right, it was started off at like forty bucks. Yeah, I kept watching it, kept watching it, kept watching it. It got down to twenty three. I was getting ready to pull the trigger. And they Someone stole bought they it. Stole out. Oh, that sucks. Because it was for twenty three bucks. I was like, damn, I'm jumping on that. That is a really good deal. Oh, so I, I need to get it because my wife loves serial killer stuff. And okay, so real quick, this is a complete side yeah. note. Has nothing to do with board games. Yep. You like podcasts. Mm -hmm. Does she like podcasts? She doesn't listen. To, she hates talk radio. Okay, but if she loved, you need to listen to a podcast on Spotify called Last Podcast on the Left, and they, it's like three or four guys, and they talk about the serial killer shit. Like mm -hmm. they they talk about the BTK killer from Wichita, Kansas. Mm -hmm. They did a, a five part series on Jack the Ripper. They did one on Yosef Mengele, the guy from the scientist from the fucking Holocaust in Auschwitz. Um, and these guys, they're funny. Um, so they're not like all somber, like, right, oh, right. I killed 60 people. And it's just like, they, they understand that what they're talking about is fucked up, but they make jokes. So it's like right up my alley anyway. Right. And right. I, I have to plug, cause these guys, Kat and I would like, we'll just listen to them. Like when we're doing just shit around the house, when mm -hmm. we're on long car drives, cause they're, they're fantastic and they do their research. They know what they're talking about. They're awesome. So have your wife check them out uh, if she if she likes serial killer stuff, and the reason why is because I we just listened to the five part series of Jack the Ripper, which was very interesting. Um, I actually knew quite a bit of Jack the Ripper by from theirs anyway, but they were fun to listen to. Below from Whitechapel is um, is just that you one person is it's a hidden movement game. One person plays as Jack the Ripper, the other players play. So there'll always be five. Of the policemen, regardless if you're playing, right. if it's me and you, you'll control five people, which you'll probably do better. Uh, I like hidden movement games because everything's open knowledge, mm -hmm. and uh, you the it's fun for the hidden movement because it's like, oh, that's what they're gonna do. Well, I can't do anything about that, so I'm screwed, or I can. Um, this is one of your most simplistic ones uh, because all Jack does is he picks out of like, I think there's a hundred spots on the board. He picks one of them to be his hideout, and there are certain locations where he kills a, a prostitute, um, a lady of the night. And you can do whichever one you want, um, and that's where Jack starts. So everyone right. knows he's, he's here at the beginning of his turn. He has five other options to move to, but he has, like I think, 15 movements to be able to get to his hideout. So there's strategy for Jack to be like, okay, well, I'm not going to kill someone right next to my hideout then move one spot and mm -hmm. be like i made it because then they're gonna be like okay well his hideout's these one of these three right um now he has some special abilities he has a carriage and a a lant a, a lantern and he gets oh it's been a while i think he gets either less tokens as as the night's going because you have four rounds mm -hmm. um and it's uh so the the carriage lets him move twice um, and the lantern lets him cross alleys, so he can kind of cut across. So he has right. some some movement, but this is one of those kind of perfect knowledge, not not perfect knowledge, but it's easier to track Jack than it is in Fury of Dracula or uh, Hunt for the Ring. Um, but this one has just always been like done really really well because in a lot of hidden movements for the players looking for the guys, it's it's discouraging most of the game. It's like right. we have no idea where he's at. This one, it's like, okay, well, uh, what's cool is the police can be like, okay, because they move, Jack moves on the numbers and the police move on these little black squares. They can search each adjacent number to the black square until they, if they find a clue, right. then they have to stop. So if I moved, let's say, on 27 and 33, and any one of those would have given away, like, a clue, mm -hmm. if they ask about 33, then that, their search is done, so they don't gotcha. know about 27. Gotcha. Um... But the following rounds in Letters from Whitechapel is the you you mark where the policemen are, and the players, the lead police guy, has these black tokens. Some of them are blank, and the others have the colors. So you can swap where they're going to be, but they have to be at least 
A token has to be placed at least where there was a policeman before, but it doesn't have to be the same one. Right. And for Jack kills, he can wait. And if he waits, then people can move the white prostitute pawns away, mm -hmm. the, but he gets to look at a token and put it back, and it's like, oh, that's a blank. Okay, that's a giveaway. So it kind of lets him decide where he wants to kill. It's it's such a good w hidden movement game. They made an expansion called Dear Boss, which was based off the Dear Boss uh, letters that he sent. And it adds, it adds a bit more like gamer mechanics, like special abilities for the police officers, more things that Jack can do. It also had a balancing thing. If people were finding it was too hard, right. there was a way, hey, here's a little b boost for the policeman. If, pe if Jack was finding it too hard to win, he gets a boost. So gotcha. um, it's really good. It's really good. I'll, I'll just let you borrow it. Yeah. You know, how about that? <laughs> like, yeah. like, it's been... She will, she will love playing it for sure. Yeah. Um, and I've played it like hidden movement games. I think in this one in particular, it, I think they work well with two. Mm -hmm. Probably, probably even better because you don't have to listen to some idiot be like, "I think he's over here," and it's like he's not over there. <laughs> and then sometimes he's right, and it's like, "Yes, yes, don't listen to him, please." Yeah, that's one of my favorite things about hidden movement is like, there's times where I'm moving, and then uh, all a friend will be like, "Okay, so he was here, so he he must have moved here, 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 and here, so he's on 19," and I'm like. What is wrong with you? Like, how do you? I, I, I'm thinking that it's it's really good. So it's still falling because I don't. I just don't play it right. enough, even though I'm raving about it. Now I want to play it, and I think that happened last year because I was like, oh, this game is fucking great. <laughs> it fell 90 spots. Uh, but yeah, so that's my 81 letters from Whitechapel. Oh, that's it, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that was it for that segment, everyone. That was. 90 through 81 let us know what you think of the games that we mentioned in the comments below stick around for the rest of the top 100 and like comment share and subscribe and have a wonderful whatever time day it is for you hey everyone thanks so much for watching this and if you like this video then click the subscribe button below to enjoy any video that i put out and right next to that subscribe button there's a little bell click that so you get notified of whenever i actually upload these videos if you want to support the channel, you can definitely visit my Patreon page. The link is in the description below. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.